Okay, guys. Waiting for my printer to stop tripping. It's going bananas over there. I'm going to give you guys a, a few moments to join me. Hey, y'all. It's Friday. Go Friday. Hey, fr hey, Robin. You back, girl. Let me let me wave at you. Hold on. This thing on the tripod is cray cray. Hey. Hey, Robin. Welcome back. <laughs> it's about to get lit. So get your questions uh, ready and... Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have fun tonight. I'm waiting for Everett to log on and we'll get we'll get this thing cracking. <laughs> Go Robin. Go Robin. <laughs> hey Tarasai. All right, Fit Genius is on. Wait for my co-host. So look, I have a funny story to, to tell about this blouse. I'm gonna tell it in a second. Let me get let me get uh Everett on and then we can talk. Hey, what's up, y'all? <laughs> okay, Everett, yes, Everett's texting me. I need you on this screen right now. Stop texting me, Everett. <laughs> Get on the screen. And yes, I dressed up. My peoples is online. We, you know, we dressing up. All right, so I have a pen and pad, of course, because I'm going to be writing down some of your questions and comments, but... We're going to be talking about really anything you want to talk about, um, anything that's, let's say, IG friendly. And um, so you can just start thinking about, um, let me get Everett on. Ah, this phone on a tripod is so crazy. Let me take the phone off. Hold on. Let me take the phone off. All right. Let's get every a couple of y'all. Hey, Fran. Um, let me wave at a couple of y'all now that I got my phone in my hand. Hey, handsome. What's up? Oh, how you doing? Okay, so look, he's over here texting me talking about he got to change his clothes. I had to put something on right quick. Oh, yeah. uh, you didn't know? I woke up like this. What you talking about? <laughs> you woke up. I got to get myself together. You see what I'm saying? No, you good. You good. All right. So I haven't started. I was waiting for you, but I did promise the people that I would tell them a funny blouse story. So I am one of those people that was literally on Instagram, clicking purchase now on all those <laughs> Instagram ads. And I'm thinking like, I don't have no place to go. Why am I sitting up here buying bathing suits and sexy ass blouses? <laughs> so this is one of my sexy blouses that I bought since being quarantined that I didn't think I was going to get a chance to wear, but but then tonight happened. So here we go. Here we go. Y'all like it? That sounds dope. You like it, Ev? Can you guys hear me? Because I'm feeling like I need to get my microphone. Can you guys hear me? I mean, you can get all professional and get your microphone, um, or you can project, well, you or you can project. Hey, listen, listen. However, <laughs> however it needs to be done, I'll do it. All right, let's get this thing cracking. So those of you that are tuned in, first of all, thank you for tuning in. Um, this is the first night that we're doing this, and this is the first time I've actually really been on Facebook Live, like for real, for real. Um, so just wanted to welcome you guys to Live, Laugh, and Exercise. I'm your host, Michaela, and I have my handsome co-host, Everett. Everett to the shipman. Okay, okay. So... This idea literally came up, what, at 4 o'clock today? When did I call you, Everett? I, mean, I called you, like, at 3. I mean, and it just kind of popped up into my head because I know a lot of people are doing uh, IG shows. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. But, like, really, what what could I talk about that, you know, is not being talked about? And I just thought about, like, sort of the things that I would talk to my girlfriends or my guy friends about. I actually probably have a, a few more guy friends than girlfriends. And I thought, okay, well, if I could boil down like those conversations or if I could boil down my passions into three words, like what would that be? And when I started thinking about it, I was like, okay, live. I'm always trying to live my best life, whether it's wearing a mom hat or trainer hat or whatever, right? Business owner, whatever. Um, laugh. Oh my God. Like I live to laugh. So I'm always cracking jokes. I'm always, you know, looking for the joke. I'm laughing at, I'm being gullible with jokes, all of that. And then exercise. Y'all kind of know the background on that. 
But for those of you who I'm just meeting either tonight or meeting in my sort of new chapter of my life, um, again, I'm Michaela. Um, I am the former owner of a of the first pole studio in DC called the Peace Spot Fitness Studio. We were open for 12 years, did a lot of trend setting with that. Um, I myself have been in the fitness industry since 2004 as a trainer. Um, so a long time and um, I am a group fitness manager. I also am a former division one athlete. So really that exercise piece is huge for me because um, now that I look back on almost 40 years, um, exercise has always been an intricate part of my life. It's something that got me through two pregnancies. It's something that helped me bounce back. It's I've met some of like my closest friends through my fitness connections. So um, again, I boiled down sort of my life goals and passions and came up with live, laugh and exercise. So this is going to be an unscripted exchange. Um, something that's real, something that's fluid. Um, whatever and I are going to do is we have some questions we're going to ask each other, but really we didn't want to open it up to you guys. And I want you guys to type in questions. Um, I played field hockey, Robin. I was the first black woman to play and captain the field hockey team at Georgetown University. So um, I don't know if y'all can see this, but here's my little flyer right here. Here's my little flyer. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was my sport. But anyway, the conversation tonight is going to be real. It's going to be fluid. Um, so I want you guys to have tons of fun. Be candid. Keep it grown and sexy. And let's, let's see where this thing goes. Okay. So enough about me. Let me open the uh, open this up to my co-host, Everett. Why don't you tell the people who you are, what you do, all your greatness, all that good stuff. Well, first of all, thank you, Michaela. Um, First of all, I don't even know how I'm going to follow up behind <laughs> all of that greatness that was just put out. You know, I felt almost like I'm a peasant coming up behind the team, but it's okay. Come on, son. I want to tell on, you guys son. a little bit about me. Um, I am a big family guy. I'm the oldest of eight. So for me, uh, that's how we grew up. We grew up in a in a household with a with, uh, few rooms and a lot of children, and it was a lot of drama. And uh, but I love it. I love the family. Literally, last night, for the first time ever, I was literally on FaceTime for like six hours um, with my family. And it was, it was great. It was fun interacting with them. Um, grew up in the church. So for me, I have a very, you know, uh, I guess, strong spiritual background for me. Um, I'm big on faith, fitness, and family. So for me, um, that was how my, the scope of my life went. I, when I dropped out of college, a big thing for me after that first year um, was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And that's where I was big into, uh, I was into acting for a while, went on a few stages, uh, was, was, you know, in a few different, uh, I guess, TV shows, I, sh I should say, as extras. So don't try to find it. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, don't, try to, don't try to fact check because he was an extra, y'all. <laughs> do that. Um, and then, um, and then, of course, I was uh, pursuing. Uh, I was in the ministry for a bit before I, uh, you know, took my talents elsewhere. I guess. But uh, and so I've been in fitness. I've been in fitness for since 2010 professionally. It's been a joy. So I just hit my 10 year mark, and I remember very vividly um, when I used to wonder if I'd ever make it to 10 years. It seemed so far away. So to be at this position now and to have uh, accomplished what I've done, been able to launch a pa uh, podcast, uh, my podcast, my blog, um, launch my website, a couple of products all, all over the last couple of years, it has been um, amazing. So I'm excited to work with this, um, this particular queen in her own right, Michaela. She's just, she's just one of the funnest people I've ever been around. So uh, this is really a privilege. I paid him to say that, y'all. <laughs> no, this is going to be so much fun. Thank you. And you did a good job following that. I, some of that stuff I didn't even know. So that's dope. All right. Look, let's jump right into this. So my question for you, Everett, and to the group, whoever's tuning in, being in the fitness industry, I feel like Okay, let me just ask the question. Let me just ask the question. Okay, being a personal trainer and being someone who's in phenomenal shape as you are, okay. does your significant other, this is my, my, my A question, does your significant other have to be 
fit as well. And let me qualify that as fit as you, not so much. Talk to me about how your passion for fitness kind of plays out into, into your dating scene or, you know, yeah. Talk to me about that. That's my question. And I want other people to chime in. I'm looking at y'all questions or your comments and we're going to fuel this conversation. So I want y'all to chime in too. Go ahead, Everett. See, see, this is what I like about Michaela. She comes right in with the guns blazing. This is her A question. Bam, bam. The heavy hip, right? The heavy hip. <laughs> um, this is a very interesting question. I've been asked that a few times. And um, I will say that for me, I've, I've gone both. You know, I've run the gamut, you know. I've been obviously dated and been with people who were not so fit. You've run the gamut. Okay, I'm taking notes. You've run the gamut. <laughs> <laughs> I've been with people who are not so, you know, in what people would consider shape, um, as well as people who have been in shape. And I can't really, I, I can't really say that there's a preference so much as much as it is, like I don't have a particular size, but in a sense I do. And I'm gonna tell you what that means. For me, you have to be involved with fitness. Now, what that looks like and what that translates out to be, it's different from person to person. I don't have a size, uh, a size issue. I'll give you an example. Um, I used to be with somebody who had been in a relationship with a guy who said that if she gains 40 pounds, He's out. And I, he's out. Oh, he's shit. Out. He's out. And, I mean, that's harsh in my opinion, but I don't, you know, that's not my, that's not my thing. But by default, because I do expect her to be into fitness, I guess there is some sort of a hidden or subliminal expectation as far as what her physical condition is, if that makes sense. So it don't matter to you. It doesn't really matter, you know? If there's any other males on this view right now, I want y'all to chime in too, because I'd be interested to see how that plays out between the sexes. Um, I'm going to tell you, honestly, it matters a lot to me. Like, way, like now, again, I'm almost 40, and I think that I'm more in tune with my non-negotiables now than I used to be at, like, even, even 30. Yeah. Definitely more than 20, right? And... I didn't realize how much someone's physical fitness mattered to me <laughs> until until I was turned off by it. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I'm a visual person. I'm a physical and a visual person. I like to touch and I like to see and I like to smell. Like I'm like real in tune with my senses, eyes being one of the main. <laughs> when I first met you and we would hug, I'd be like, damn, you smell good. Like it's crazy. And to the same token, like if that smell is not on, I'm like, eh. but the same thing visually, like for me, from a passion perspective, like I got to see some cut there. You got to like, when I see you and that shirt is off, like I got to be like, damn, right? Otherwise I can tolerate being in a relationship with you, but I'm not going to want to be in a relationship with you. I don't know if that makes sense. And like, I didn't realize that about myself until like, yeah. I got older, like, yeah, I can coexist in a relationship with anybody of any type of build shape because there's nothing wrong. There's no, like, weight or build that you can prescribe, right? But I did notice as far from a passion perspective, that kind of, like, rip your clothes off, like, mm, as soon as I see you, that's not happening with for me, for somebody who doesn't have, like, a particular cut. And it's specifically, like, in the arms, of course, in the abs, and that little V, that little V, right? Right at the, um, yeah, yeah, that's my, that's my part. So, anyway, it matters a lot to me. How do you guys feel? I don't see anyone writing in. How do you guys feel about physical fitness? Does it matter to you? Nobody's writing in. Everybody's like, mm, keep it on the low. Come on, Robin. Hit me with something. <laughs> Uh, well, I can I can uh, piggyback on that because, yes, I agree that as I've gotten older, you know, different things have, you know, shifted. You know, what I wanted or went for previously, maybe not so much now, you know. Like what? Come on, give me specifics. The people want to know. Well, I think now it's definitely mandatory. Like I used to say, it's definitely mandatory now that, like, you have some sort of a gym membership. Now, whatever you do. <laughs> so, like, you're not checking IDs. You're checking gym membership. Like, at the door, you're like, show me your gym. 
hilarious. <laughs> and and it, it's crazy because I've always I've always loved thick, curvy. That that's my thing. Um, but it's definitely my belief you can maintain that and be healthy. And I think that a big part of that is because I'm looking at family. I want somebody who's around for for when you know when we start having kids and I start you know I'm I'm the big I'm the big have have fun dad you know. Mm -hmm. Look, Cammy said, Cammy's throwing shade at you. She said, is he changing his answer now? I was kind of thinking the same thing, Cammy, because he kind of hit me with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree, girl. No, no, <laughs> you, still, you still, no, I, I love the curves. I'm not going to bang on the curves. I do love the curves. But <laughs> Cammy hit you with that. Um, So, okay, let's keep this thing rolling. Numbers. Huh? I just don't have any set numbers, you know? I don't have numbers, but I do know when I don't like it. <laughs> I agree. And this is one of the things I got to see or not see. But I will tell you, um, a nice cut, physically fit looking person, it's not that I won't like you if you're not that, but I'm going to want to rip your clothes off if you have that. And even if it don't work out, at least we have that. And that's going to lead me to my next question. Is So I asked about the more serious type of relationship, a significant other, a wife, you know, a girlfriend. Um, yes. Okay. Francisca says she loved curves on her lady. And, oh, Mazani want to know if you're single. Are you single? I am. Uh... Oh! <laughs> Why are you single? Why are you stuttering? No, I said I am in the process of, uh, Let's let's just say recruiting. <laughs> why is this so like why is this taking 10 minutes to get out? Are you single? I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm recruiting. You're recruiting or you're recruited? Recruiting. Oh, you're recruiting. So you're single. What is this? Recruiting, yes. You see how guys are, y'all? Look, that was a simple yes or no. Are you single? Yes. He had to put the switch, switch. Okay. So, all right. So I was moving somewhere. What I wanted to know is... Maybe I'm not recruiting, actually. It's so, it's so much. It's so much. Relationships are so hard, hard. ain't they? But see, single... Okay, so, Cammy, I'm so glad you asked that question because all she asked... Or not Cammy, Mazani, I'm sorry. All she asked is, were you single? She didn't say, are you in love? Did you find your right to be? She said single. So See, single has a well, fact, in my opinion, in my opinion, my, single is a spectrum. Yes, yeah, single is a spectrum. It doesn't mean that you found your soulmate in life spectrum, but it means that you have someone in your life that you're taking seriously enough to not be like putting the promo out on yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's what I that's what I think of as not being single. Like somebody you spent a lot of time with and somebody whose feelings you would not want to hurt by promoting yourself as being single. And so that's how I take it. How do you take it? Because that felt like a really loaded question and I didn't think it was loaded. I think that um I think I think people will get mad if I say what I think what <laughs> <laughs> what I think. Seems. No, look, this is, we said we keeping it real. I this want is, you to keep it real. And I think people need to hear your perspective too. Okay. All right. <laughs> and the body said she didn't mean to embarrass you. <laughs> no, here's, here's my thing. I feel, and this is, it's going to sound funny, but this is the one time I really agree with the government. I think I'm single until the IRS says I'm not. Now, you better stop. You better stop. That is hilarious. Okay. No, no okay. Wait, I can dig it. And then, and then to go further, the title that really, really the wrong way the most is the title of boyfriend and girlfriend. Because to me, that, that uh, I don't know. It, and, and it's not that it's not important. I feel that boyfriend and girlfriend titles are thrown around uh, more frivolously, right? And for me, that's, it's why I don't like that particular title. Like if, if, if that's going to be what your title is, then it should not be one of those long-term deals. To me, a boyfriend-girlfriend title, that's something that's reserved for people that are serious enough about each other and have decided, like for instance, I don't believe in a four or five year girlfriend. I, I don't believe in that. It's like, for what? What are you doing? So uh, it is to me- That's a good another topic. I'm about to write that down because- 
I don't know. Oh, I'm lying. Girlfriend, boyfriend. Go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. Granted, my first relationship was a, was a seven year relationship. I was a lot younger. My, my older self does not believe in that. If you're going to be a boyfriend and girlfriend, great. But it should definitely be something that has a finite end to it. It's not something that's dragged out. It's not, you let's be boyfriend and girlfriend. Three years from now, we still boyfriend and girlfriend. What are you doing? Okay, that you gave me so much to deal with. So, okay, to answer her question, you are single. Is that correct? Yes. Let me just get down because you know I'm a Capricorn. I don't have time for all that love. I just need to answer. You single. Okay, ladies, he's single. All right. Let me ask the second part of my question, and then you opened up a whole nother Pandora's box with this long term relationship thing. So I asked about if fitness mattered for the person who you're taking seriously, your significant other. But what about your just your sexual conquest or your sexual partner? Does it matter any differently? Is it the same? Hold up. Tell me about it. Oh, wait, wait. I'm not even sure I understood that question. Tell me again. Okay. So my initial question was, does fitness matter when it comes to your significant other, your girlfriend, your, your wife, da, 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 da. You were very diplomatic about that. You told me it's the inside that matters as long as she have a gym membership. Blah, blah, blah. We got you. We got you. Okay. <laughs> I said, keep it real with the homies. Take off your shirt. Show me that six pack. Show me all of that. And then that's, that's what I said. Okay. So now I'm going to scale it back because there's a clear difference between someone who you deem your significant other and someone who is just a sexual conquest or somebody who you float in and out with. So I want to know if physical fitness, the way they look naked, if that matters more, less, or the same if it's a sexual conquest for you. Hmm, that's an interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, I think that if that were the case, if I am looking at this as a sexual conquest, I mean, I wouldn't be a guy if I did that. If but does it matter? Does it matter? So does it matter more or less or the same? Like, if if you judging, if you know you're not taking that person serious, does it matter oh. what they look like with the clothes off, or does it not? Okay. Yes, it matters. Yes, it matters. Okay. It matters because um, I don't know. I think we all have like a a certain like I don't want to say pride, but you know you you want to be able to like look back on it. If it's a sexual conquest, you want to just be able to look back on it and be like, like you don't want to look back and be like, what the heck was I thinking? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So, but and that would be based on their physical appearance, or would that be based on how good the sex was? No, da, it, da, would da. Be, it would be based on literally what you said. If their clothes were off, like like whatever you see physically from that perspective. Well, wait a minute. What if they What if they look great naked, mm -hmm. and the sex was bad? If, hold on. If they look great naked, and the sex but the sex was bad. That's something to like look back on crazy too. So like, okay, let me give you a scenario. Yeah, yeah. Let's say you just, try, you because you said you don't, you don't run again, right? So let's say on what? one part of that, uh -huh. you you dealt with somebody who wasn't in as good of physical shape as the, as the next, but the sex was bomb, right? And let's say on the other end, you had sex with somebody whose body was what you considered banging, but the sex was bad. Oh, okay. What one would be more fruitful? What one would be, feel bad? What one would you look back on more positively and negatively? Tell me that. Wow, that's, uh, that's interesting because I've been in that situation before. And from a personal perspective, um, I definitely, I guess, prefer or lean towards the better sexual experience as opposed to the the appearance of it. But if you're talking about what conversation goes down with your boys or when you're talking to other, you know, homies, whether they be female or, or male, you know, mm -hmm. you almost don't even care how it is in the bedroom because you can't explain it to them. All they want to know is you were with that person or not. So it's like, mm -hmm. you know, um, and then, and then the other thing is, as a fitness person, it's almost like one of those things where if I don't have somebody who is who who seems like they're in the fitness, it's almost like 
it's almost like a blemish on me. Like you, you mm -hmm. really out here preaching fitness, and, and that's so real. You're doing fitness. That's so real. And, and, that is so real. Yeah, and I'm <laughs> in a relationship like that, and and it's almost like it's like. I mean, what do I do? You know, I'm supposed to, I'm preaching it and they're telling me, well, you can't even do it with your significant other. You can't do it with this person. How can you, you know, so it's almost like a, it's almost like a knock on my business. No, it's no, it sounds so, it, it sounds really harsh out there, y'all. And that sounds really superficial, it, but it's true. It's, it's like as trainers, our body is a part of our uniform. Yeah. It's, it's the way we, it's the way we pitch to y'all that we're going to help you do what you want to do. But and then by extension of that, whoever we decide to be with, their physical appearance by virtue of what we do is also a part of our uniform. It's so true. Um, for me, all of that is wrapped up into the same thing. So I, whether it's a sexual conquest or if it's somebody serious, they got to look good naked in my opinion. It, it don't, it, it's not separate for me. So, yeah, and I mean, that that's just what it is. I got to look at whether I love you or whether I like you, you got to look good naked. I don't, I mean, the, maybe when I was younger, but really I can count on one hand how many people I've been with that didn't fit the physical mold that I needed them to. And if they didn't, it was like it never happened again, right? So... Um, it matters a lot to me, like a lot. So anyway, um, I saw Chris, Chris Wilson, what up, baby? I saw him say yes and yes. It matters on the conquest and it matters when you're taking somebody serious. That's CW right? 44. <laughs> Chris, what up, Chris? Yeah, that's my bobo. Martini goggles makes everybody look good. Okay, so maybe we should invest in that. You know what else make everybody look good? A little sippy sip. <laughs> Well, no, simply said, thank you, everybody. All right. Now, I've been the oh, you talked about a four or five year girlfriend, but I'm gonna hold that. So, What's do you have any questions for me or anyone out there? Um, I, I wrote down a few questions myself. Okay, wrote down a few questions yourself. Okay, hey, Jackie, what up, boo boo? We having a good old conversation tonight, Jackie. <laughs> I kind of feel like. Um, you might have already answered this, but I'm going to put it out there just to hear it. If you have found any, what has your experience been in, you're, you're a fitness professional, you're a training professional, and the times when you have been with somebody who was not fit, what is your experience as far as training or helping that person get into shape? You know, I hate to be, you know, prescribe gender talk to the people talk to um i hate to be you know stereotyping people but men are really weird about stuff like that first of all most of the people i've ever dated seriously were in physical shape yep. so i haven't That's really had the problem they were self-motivated like all that stuff <sighs> but in the time or two that it wasn't and it was a serious relationship it was hard because I felt like as a strong woman, it was already hard for a man to be with me anyway, right? Because I'm on, on the exterior, I'm this strong black woman, right? Even though that's a damn farce because I am a strong black, black woman, but in a relationship, I like to be, I like to take- Y'all see Michaela's body. Shut up, shut up, right? In a relationship though, I like to be passive and I like to be told, not told what to do, but I don't like to be the boss of my relationship because I run shit all day. I don't want to run shit in a relationship. So that's a farce itself. But people, men sometimes feel like they can't be vulnerable around you or they can't subject themselves to you. And as a trainer, you know, um, your clients or whoever you're training are put in a very, very um, like vulnerable position. You know, in the gym, what it is is that people are typically running to or running away from something. And so they're you're they're kind of vulnerable to you because you understand that. You know that in a relationship, I found that it's hard for a man to, like, not be able to do something I asked them to do. Like, give me 50 push ups right now. And he can't do that. I feel like he feels like he's weak to me. And so it's been hard the time or two where I've it's really just one time. <laughs> Um, where I've had to do, 
no shade. <laughs> it was a long time too. Um, the person who that I, I had that experience with, it was hard for him to take direction from me because he immediately became an inferior or vulnerable to me. And he was already struggling to be my equal anyway, right? Mm -hmm. To him, to me, I was cool. Yeah. So it, to, that's to answer your question. I feel like the type of men that I think that I'm attracted to would not need me to train them. And that's being really real. Like I don't, and I don't want to train them either. Right. That's the thing. I told you, I don't like to bring work home. I don't like to run shit at home. I'm not up here trying to train my man. Like, can he train me? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how I feel when you run shit all day. And I'm sure women, ladies, I know you could relate to this. When you run shit all day, it's something sexy about letting somebody run you just for a little bit. So I don't know if I answered your question, but that's my answer. No, nah, that was, that was, hey, that was perfect. That's what I was looking for. I just wanted, I mean, I, I figured you had some level of experience in that. <laughs> Well, you know, because we talks, we talks. <laughs> well, I mean, and just from my perspective and my experience, and I've known couples who, uh, I've talked to couples where that dynamic has been at play. And it's interesting because it, it, it somehow, in more of the people that I've talked to and more of those relationships, and maybe somebody on here can disagree, but it's been one of those things where there is that tension there. Between yeah. Too, for whatever the reason is, you know, whether whether one doesn't like to take instruction from the other, whether the other one feels inadequate. Sometimes it's been that the person who's the, the trainer or the fit person comes across because, you know, in that dynamic, you know, sometimes you have people who are almost militant when they're in their sessions. Yeah, drop, do this, do this. And some people can't take that, you know, certain people. And I'm gentle. Like, I'm gen I mean, I, I'm gentle as I can be, but like, I'm not really trying to see somebody fail either. I'm like just trying to help you succeed. I'm not like, you know, God damn it. But yeah, when that, when that inferiority complex loses in your head, nothing, nothing can do, nothing can go well. So <laughs> how about you? Me? Yeah. Oh, um, I mean, yeah. So I. I hey, Thais. Sorry. <laughs> no, Say hi to the people. No, it's fine. It's fine. I have, uh, like I said, I have been in that situation. And um, I think in hindsight, I wouldn't do it again. So that mm -hmm. kind of to my point of the woman being fit. And she doesn't have to be fit because, like I said, I love curves. I love the I love the thicknesses. Like what I like to call a thick fit. But thick fit. Um, thick fit. at the same time, um, she should be self-motivated when it comes to her fitness, you know, whatever that means, whether it's, whether it's a couple times a week going to the yoga studio, whether you're taking a pole dancing class every Friday, hey. going bar, <laughs> whatever it is that has to be or should be part of your regimen. It sounds like you're much nicer than me when it comes to that. God, God bless you for that. I feel like I got old and got stretched. Oh, you know, all right. So you you open this can of worms talking about long term relationships. And you said you don't want a four or five year girlfriend. OK. I have a comment on that. So I'm a believer in um, just kind of taking the time to just learn who you with. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I was with somebody for 11 years and I Still don't quite know. <laughs> yes, well, you right? Completely. Yeah, like, and so for me, I felt like two years into that relationship, uh -huh. I had just stripped away the fake shit. He was faking for two fucking years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, it, you know, it took us living together and all of that stuff. Two years. I think when I was younger, like, you know, I had mapped out my life. It was like, go to college get a great job, get married, buy a house, be a lawyer, whatever. It didn't have some kids. It was like something like that, right? And I had always envisioned myself being married um, by, you know, 25, I think at some point, but then at 30. And I had that same role. Like, I need to be married after two years. It just felt, two felt like a good number. 
And then I started getting into serious relationships in my 20s. And I was like, oh, hell no. Like, two, we at two years now. I ain't ready. I ain't ready right? And then, like I said, being in that long-term relationship helped me realize even more that, number one, I was content after two or three years and not physically, like, technically being engaged because I, I knew that we would kind of be together. Like, I never had to fight for his love or fight for his desire to be married to me. And I think that's a big thing. I think that when you're in a relationship for a long time and you don't know if that person wants to spend the rest of their life with you and you don't know how much they value you, then that time frame becomes a really big thing. It matters. I was always clear on that. I always knew whenever I wanted to get married, all I had to do was drop a hint and I was going to get married. So for me, time didn't damn matter. I was like, and I took that damn time. Um, I really did take that time because I was like, I need to get to know this person. I, I don't think I was at a point in my 20s definitely to like relinquish that selfishness. Like I'm like, I got my own space. I got my own shit. I don't got nobody else's debt, you know? So I was perfect. The moral of the story is I was perfectly okay being a longtime girlfriend and having a longtime boyfriend because I was always clear on his intentions. And I was, and it was never any doubt about that. Um, I think that in the relationships I've been in where I wasn't clear, then I started setting those, you know, superficial deadlines. So. Interesting. 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 <laughs> yeah. So, but I want you to flush out a little bit more what you said, because you were very emphatic about it. Like, well, see, look here. I don't want no four or five year girlfriend. <laughs> I just, you know, I, I think it also depends on, I guess, your dating style, right? I mean, you know, when you're single, it was always trying to figure out, I mean, how do you date? Do you date linearly and date one person at a time and, you know, sequentially date one person for an amount of time and then move to the next? Do you date or juggle three or four people at a time in and out the road? Like, you know, trying to figure all of that out, um, I guess, and depending on your approach, I guess that would determine how you view the title boyfriend girlfriend etc but the thing that bothers me really most about it is when you put that title on you then take this person off the market without the guarantee that anything uh, uh permanent is going to come from it that's the, <laughs> that's yeah. the problem that i have right because if i'm investing you know this time and let's say we've got to the point where we have been in a boyfriend girlfriend relationship six months or so or whatever, then at some point in time, there should be some sort of thought process that I can deal with this person on this level. I mean, and some people are going to disagree, but that's just how I feel. So for me, it's like, rather than just, I guess, throw the title around just to do it, just for a sense of security, just for a sense of being able to say, I have a boyfriend, I have a girlfriend, you know, being a little more thoughtful of it. And, and you know, like you said, taking that time so that when you do say, hey, you know what? I've been spending all this time. Let's take it to this particular level and, and see like, the intent is at least um, that we are gonna do something a little more permanent, a little more serious. And to me, once you decide that this person is worth you being seriously committed to, to me, it should take a whole long time after that to, to try to figure out when you're going to make it like when you're going to actually cross that bridge. So do you date linearly or do you I'm, go all over the place? Question, McKay. You try to the people want to know. The people want to know. Do you, do you date linearly or you go all over the place? Um, I believe in dating linearly just because um, it, and when you say linearly, you mean one person at a time. One person at a time. Are you serious? Okay, I'm gonna ask the question again, Ev. I'm gonna ask oh, the question again. Oh, let me let me qualify this. You see this finger? Do you see this let, finger? Let Do you me, see this eye? Let, I'm gonna ask this question one more time. You see how serious I am? Ask the question. I want to. <laughs> what is your dating approach? Do you date one person at a time, or do you? test out the waters in the beginning and then ultimately settle on one person. Okay. Well, the people want to know. Well, I think that that depends on, um, that depends on when, <laughs> when that starting time is. Cause I believe in linear dating, right? I believe that, you know, 
that's it. But in the beginning, it never works out like that. Like it's always at some point in time, like when you first, like, especially when I first started or first came on the market from that, you know, particular place from my previous relationship, then that was, yeah. that was the deciding factor. Hey, how do I do it? And as much as you want to just do like linear or, or whatever, it doesn't really happen like that because you have three or four different options. Or so you're saying your intention is 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 always to to find someone and like them and be with them, but it's sometimes it takes a little longer to figure out who that is. Yeah, that, and that's so Chris. Chris said that it takes a lot to date multiple people, it does. and he gives kudos to anyone, and that's so true. I don't have my rule. The, the older I, I don't have it in me. I, it's it's too much. You got to text three, four, five different people. You got to be at certain places, different time zones. And nah, it's too much. But also, here has been my rule all the time. If some shit ever hit the fan, if I messed around and got pregnant, I messed around and got an STD, I, sort of like this social distancing, I need to be able to narrow that shit down quick, fast. And the, <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like in Dayton, I need to know who that, who that baby pappy is. <laughs> no, I can't be caught up. You know, trying to figure out who I'm going to break the news to or if I catch something, be calling all these different people. Nah. So for me, it is a convenience thing. But also, I think I'm just a, uh, a relationship person. I think that I spend so much time screening people that by the time I date you, I really like you. Like, I'm not using I, and, and I don't know if that's by choice or just inherently in me. I don't use the dating process to, like, figure it out by the time i date you i figured it out i fucks with you and now it's about me trying to figure out if you on that same level you know like that's what it is so hey jenny richardson what up girl we having a pretty good conversation here uh all right shoot another question did you, did you have anything else to say on that uh no i mean i mean that's 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 literally my thing is like chris said it takes too much to to do multiple people but unfortunately, in the beginning, like especially if you've been in a relationship like I was, I was in a very intense, singular relationship um, for a few, <clears throat> a few years. And what happens is when you do come back out on that market, it's almost like, I mean, you can't just go with one. Like, you got to see what's out there. You, you Let's go into that. Let's go. Because one of my friends, and I know I'm, I'm supposed to throw it at you, but I, I just got to ask this because you gave me the perfect segue. Oh, Lord. So, like, what's your, no, what's your thoughts and opinions about online dating because I know with quarantine now it's a big thing but just like in general that's like a big thing like the online dating and um I thought about that when you just said about like when you're fresh back on the market like how do you do that and I guess I'm just old school I'm trying you remember when I told you I like to smell touch look I can't do that online it's like I have an issue with online dating because I'm like how you do that? So talk to me. Give me your thoughts on that. And then I swear I'm going to shut up and you can ask ask questions. <laughs> um, well, hey, Ben Kirby. Well, I have uh, I have definitely done uh, online dating before. Um, so I'm no I'm not a real you know, I'm no real stranger to it. But it depends on what your motives and your particular type of personality is. And I say it like this. Um, there are some people when they go to when they want to get their degree, they decide either they're going to go to a campus, a traditional school, or they're going to go online for their degree, right? And it depends on your, on your ability to be disciplined. Do you do online where you can motivate and be self-motivated and be disciplined? Or do you need the structure and confines of the teacher, right? And, and the students and all of that to hold you accountable. And that's a very similar um, idea when you talk about dating online and versus uh, real, real life dating, because the reality is, they're literally both the same. Online dating and traditional dating, they're the exact same in this particular aspect, that you have to go through a lot of duds, most likely, before you get mm -hmm. of quality. And I think sometimes the misnomer or the, or the uh, misconception is that you go online, it can kind of happen quick. The only thing that happens quick is a swiping left and right. I mean, <laughs> nothing else happens quick, right? So yeah. you, you basically are going to have to be in that um, mode of understanding that this first one, two, three, 10, 50 people may not be what you want it to be or what you think it should be. But, um, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't work. 
So, okay, because I have no experience with that, right? So I want to know how often do you find somebody who looks totally different than their picture? Because I told you, I'm a visual person. So I can rule out a lot of people just off the, the optics. How often do you get somebody who looks totally different? Hey, Juliet, girl. Hey. I need you to write me a question. Hey. You see Juliet, big sis in the house. What up, Juliet? All right, so how often do you get a picture and then you meet them and they look totally different? All the time? No, not, not all the time. <laughs> no, no. Let me qualify what I said. I'm a big per like, I love, I, I think online dating has its role. Traditional dating has its role. But there's nothing like traditional dating as far as understanding the person that you're dealing with, right? Because there are certain emotions, certain things that transpire in the atmosphere that doesn't happen online. So what mm -hmm. happens, I'll find somebody who looks similar to the picture. They don't usually look far off, but because it's now an interperson relationship, mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. the, the, the slightest offness about like your attitude or you have the slightest I feel character, you. Yep. character flaw, then all of a sudden you don't look like your picture. Because when you're in the picture online, I have my own idea of what I think your personality is. Yeah. But in person, your personality doesn't match. And now, now it becomes a clash and a conflict. Now, all of a sudden, the picture that I saw, you look similar. You even almost look identical. But the character flaw and the personality flaw has tainted that image. I, I, like, when you, I like when you start talking like a preacher. Babe. Yes, you better preach. Yes. Come on, preacher kid. Come on, preacher. I told you it's in me. It's, it's in me. I can't. Yeah, you start preaching. You get that serious face. That shoulder start going up. <laughs> um, uh, hey, Karen Keena. So Jenny Richardson said it's all about that URL vibe. Okay, I guess we got a, guess we got another online data. All right. So I took up all the questions. What other questions did you have? Uh, we vibe. Questions? I got. I got a. Question. And Karen Keena, I want a question for you because I know you got some good questions. We, you just joined us, so what we're talking is anything, um, fitness, relationship, anything. We've been talking about some really good stuff. Thank you. I like my red blouse too. Thank you. All right, go ahead, Ever. So Karen Keena, write in a question. <laughs> so this is hypothetical, and I usually, you know, hypothetical questions. You, there's never really a right answer, but because you don't know, it's hypothetical. But I think they also add a lot of flavor and spice to the atmosphere. So this hypothetical is, um, I'm painting a picture for you. you walk, paint, a, paint, paint a picture. Yeah, Come on. A picture, right? <laughs> you walk into the gym. You're getting ready for your workout. You're tuned in. You're zoned in or whatnot. I need to know two things from you. What is the one thing a potential suitor can do or say to completely turn you off and completely make him not the person that you want him to be? And what is the one thing that he can do that will have you swept off your feet and ready to jump in his arms? Okay. Boom. That's a great question. And I definitely want to know the same from you. That's a great question. Okay. I do not like when men are in the gym taking selfies of themselves and it's almost like they in there flossing and so self-absorbed it to me that's indicative of some some real deep shit that'll play out in a relationship some insecurity type stuff like when you in the gym go work out like all that extra like and, and i don't even like when it flushes out to instagram like when i have if there's a person on instagram and their whole Instagram page is of a self, like selfies of themselves. I mean, your Instagram page should be about you. You should be in all the pictures. But when there's a concert effort to be like, hey, look at me, I think that that plays out in really deep ways in a relationship. And I think that as a girlfriend or as a wife, you're always trying to be like, hey, look at you. Like you always have to play into that sense of security, insecurity. So I hate that. If I walk in the gym, don't do it. Just shut up, go work out, lift your damn weights. Go leave and let me chase you out, right? Now, as far as what you could do to make me jump in your arms is the exact opposite. Just be naturally damn sexy. Just be sexy and let me experience your aura, right? You do that. You don't put that, like, don't put that much effort into trying to get me to notice you and I will probably be more attracted. Now, if I show interest in you, then you gotta, you gotta, like, kind of reel it in like, don't just be nonchalant all the goddamn time. Like, show me that, like, you you feeling me? But, like, 
just be naturally sexy and humble and not be trying to be the center of attention. So okay. now, I hate that. Now, I hate it. Now to take that further, I like that response. Now to take that Yeah, further. straight men do that, Karen girls. Off the chain. <laughs> yeah, I, and I'm I'm totally uh totally against like selfies. I, I don't even like to post uh, pictures of myself unless I'm bringing a message. I think I've taken more pictures and posted of you than you have. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I don't I don't post selfies. I don't believe in posting a picture of myself, an image, a physical, whatever, without a message. It's something that inspires you, something that causes you or um, motivates you to want to do or be better. But yeah. to take that particular scenario just a little further, you say that um, if he just is being him, if you have, let's say, 10 or people, 10, 10 guys in the gym that are just being them, you've got a whole plethora or a whole uh, menu of options. So then my question would be, what could a guy do to enhance his positioning or to kind of better his positioning among the guys? Just be, just be like, so I have my baseline things that I'm looking for, right? Right. I already talked about physique. You got to have a good physique. Yeah. I talked about like humility, like not being all self-consumed. Yeah. Other than that, you can't manufacture that chemistry. Yeah. You can't do anything to attract me to you. I'm either attracted to you or I'm not. What you can do is have those baseline things and you put yourself in the pool of people who I would potentially be attracted to. But there you I don't I don't want anybody who's trying to manufacture that. And I'm definitely not trying to manufacture that. Um, again, my most passionate relationships have been sort of that unexplainable, undescribable, just chemistry. <laughs> and most of it is for the bad. Most of the people who you just have that undescribable passion, that's the people who you just need to run away from. But I've had a few of them where you just, it is what it is. It's just, it's there. You can't describe it. That person didn't try to do it to you. You didn't try to do it to them. It just happened, so yeah. But we don't we don't encounter that that much at our place of work. But I don't like it when it's is that way. <laughs> How about you? Any people's like? Is there? I mean, I know you're normally working at the gym, but there is there anything? Oh, uh, hey Zach, uh, and hey Ashton. Is there anything? Uh, uh, you know, a suitor or a female can do out on the floor that will have you like kind of quickly snap out of work mode and be like. Hey, and then snap back. Because I know you snap back. Because I know you're professional. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you put that out there. Uh, of course you are. I, I've actually never. It took me, what, like six, seven months of knowing you to even, like, get anything personal outside of the professional realm out of you. And that's one of the things that I loved about you. And that's why we became really good friends is because we connect on this level that we're connecting, but you are like the ultimate professional, the ultimate, like you always give respect to females, to your clients. And that's why I rock with you. So let me put that out there. I do appreciate that. Michaela, I definitely do appreciate that. Um, what was the question that? Oh, right. The question. <laughs> So what, what could a female do to have you at least, I know you would never act on it, but have you think like, mm, she fine. I might have to catch her outside. <laughs> well, wow. This, is, this might get a little bit explicit for you guys. But a little, come on, that's what the people want. It's 930 on a quarantine Friday. Come on. Yeah. We don't got nothing to do. But for me, for me, I have a thing for, I have a thing for, a woman, well, I guess this takes this comprises a lot of uh, women, right? But um, for yoga pants and Nikes, and I don't ask me why, I don't know. But anyway, look, yoga pants and Nikes, you call that explicit? No, 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 <laughs> no. I'm, I'm I'm working my way in. I'm working. Okay, my, okay, okay. Working my way in. Stick with me. But uh, but no, for me, what what really gets me is that one that's going hard, right? And, and watch it going hard where I can see the sweat because she's in and making it happen. But here's the other side of it. If she, the moment she becomes inaccessible because 
she's got earphones in and because she's completely tuned out, I'm automatically turned off. And the reason why is I'm a people person. So, so it, what I'm drawn to is other people person, people, people, or however you want to call that. People persons. <laughs> people persons, yes. The paper people persons. <laughs> Did you watch The Office ever? Huh? I have not. Did you ever watch The Office? Okay. Uh, Anybody who watched The Office, y'all know that reference. Go ahead. <laughs> um, so yeah, so so that's my thing. So the moment you do, like the moment you do that, then it's like it's almost like no, this is not a this is not a person who who um, entertains the idea of interacting with people. Even though I know that's not true, I know it's not true. Yeah, okay, I was about to say because no. at the, so I guess we we look for total. Di total opposite ends of the spectrum because yeah. I'm not trying to make eye contact with nobody like but that's crazy so even though even though you know for the gym it's about business people trying to get in and out normally they're coming at lunchtime whatever like you still hold that against them yeah not directly but I do just because I am hey uh Crystal um <laughs> just because um I guess because what I look at when I look at somebody, I, I don't ever, my fear, my fear is to get with a woman who has a crappy personality and who people don't want to be around and who a person who is not hospitable. Because in my mind, I'm a hospitable person, which means that the woman has to be inviting. And a woman who is, who is able to, at great lengths, block everything and, and avoid people it's almost like a, a an alarm um, sign, it, and it doesn't mean that you. That's deep. It doesn't mean that you. That's deep. But that's real deep. I never even thought about that. Yeah, the fact that you can put your earphones in, you can completely become oblivious to everybody around you when you're around people. That tells me you could very easily. I come home from work and want to hang out with you, and you could block. You could tune me out. You could tune me out because you've been tuning people out for years, and I don't want that. So, yeah, that, that's a whole, that's next week's conversation. So look, I'm going to ask one final question. We're going to wrap it up. We are on, we're going to do this every Friday. So long as we have the, the, <laughs> the time, we are ever going to do this every Friday. So we'll have a new set of questions next week. I want you guys to um, send us some questions, fitness topics, relationship topics, life topics, yeah. any of that. No. But I'm going to ask one final question. Yeah. My final question, and now listen to both parts. What's your favorite part of the female body? And what are a few ways to train that part? So don't tell me about your favorite part that you can't train, okay? What's the favorite part of a uh, female's body that you can train? And give me a few of your most, you know, your, your, your favorite ways to train that body part. Yes, Juliet, I hit them with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's say, let's say, first of all, I'm glad you qualified it like that, because I was sure enough getting ready to say, you can't really, you can't. I done been, I, I done been in the game for a little bit. I know how to qualify. I, I know. I know how to steer you in the right direction. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I, I, obviously, I love, I love butts and booties and thighs. So for me. Booty, 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 booty rocking everywhere. Hey, booty, booty, booty. <laughs> that, that, that's huge for me. So. Um, you know, I put the, I've put together a whole program to help build booties and, and rumps and whatnot. Um, so give us three. Give us three of your, your favorite. Favorite moves? Favorite glute moves, yes. Squats, deadlifts, and the Bulgarian split squats um, alternated with, either, with the lunge. So either or. You can either do lunges or you can do the Bulgarian split squats. But those three... Can they can they find examples of that on your Instagram page or how it, for somebody who doesn't know what a Bulgarian split squat is, how, how would they, how can they, do they just go on YouTube or can they find it on your page? They could definitely find it on my page. Um, one of my uh, last, uh, one of my recent lives I showed, um, and on my Facebook, there's a, um, the, the like three moves that you should be doing during quarantine or whatever like that. The Bulgarian split squat is in there. The, Regular squat is in there. I don't have the deadlifts on that one, but I do have deadlifts on my page. And uh, yeah. Big sis, big sis Juliet said hip thrust. Yes, hip thrust. Hip Come on with those glute hip thrusts. Def <laughs> definitely hip thrusts. Yes. Hip thrusts are just the hardest of all of them to, to do uh, spontaneously. So 
Um, so I don't usually pull that in, but. Look, I didn't even know Instagram gave us a, t a timer, but I got 20 seconds. So I'm going to wrap. I know they gave us a time limit. I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. We will see you next Friday at 830. Michaela and Everett, keeping it real, keeping it fluid, keeping it candid. I hope you guys had a great time tonight. I will see you guys soon.